And we love Baldy as this segment is brought to you by Boxer Gerzer, Northern California's premier workers' compensation law firm, helping injured workers get their lives back for over 40 years. We love Brian Baldinger. He's going to be a nominee for Guest of the Year, no doubt, in our first annual Doobie Awards on the Morning Roast this Thursday. Coming up, you don't want to miss that. Will Baldy get an award? We shall see. But Baldy, good morning, my man. What's going on? Good morning, Bonte. <laughs> Joe, it's good to be with you guys. I'm uh, I'm I'm here in a hotel room in uh, downtown Los Angeles, overlooking the city of Angels. Here, I can see the uh, it's a pretty clear day, so uh, it's a good view. Good to be with you guys here today. That's no doubt, good. it's good. It's good to be with you too. And, and we haven't had a chance to catch up after the Niners beat up on the Seahawks oh last goodness. Thursday in Seattle. I mean, Bosa was everywhere. George Kittle had his finest hour, and then that man named Brock Purdy continued to, to look composed, and they took over Lumen Field, and there was no doubt. They were opening boxes with NFC West hat and T-shirts with division champs all over it. What a performance for Brock Purdy last Thursday night. I agree. I mean, look, he's thrown two touchdown passes in each game so far. You know, against the Dolphins, the Bucks, and then, you know, against Seattle on the road, handling the elements. Um, you know, I mean, you can – you know, I fear – I know you guys see the same thing, but there's a spectrum of views about Brock Purdy. Oh, he's not, he's not doing anything special. Oh, it's the system. You know, Kyle Shanahan's calling plays. He's got the best talent. Well, you still got to go do it. You still got to go find George Kittle. You still got to step up in a pocket that might be a little dirty at times and keep your eyes up. You still got to do all these things. And, you know, outside of maybe one throw where maybe Ryan Neal could have had an interception and those things are going to happen, uh, I don't know what you can't like about this kid. And you, you can say, well, can they win a Super Bowl with them? Well, none of us know that. I mean, everybody wants to answer that question. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they can win a Super Bowl with Jimmy. I don't know if they can win one right now with Steve Young. I'm not sure who they can win one with. <laughs> they got to go do it. But, you know, all you can do is go, I think the kid is only going to get better with every time that he gets a chance to go play. And every game presents new challenges. Washington's a really good defense. The, they've got a really good front. Uh, the Giants scored one touchdown against them the whole day. They took, uh, you know, 18 plays to go do it. But the fact is, is that I don't care who he's playing. The guy's been impressive. And I don't think that the 49ers knew he could play like this. I don't think anybody at Iowa State knew he could step in and play like this. And I'm anxious to watch him Saturday night. Uh, on Christmas Eve. You know, we obsess. I do. I admit it. Like, I obsess with the physical traits. Oh, look how big and strong this guy is. Look how he could throw this guy. Look at the evasion in the pocket. For me, the intangibles for Brock are like popping off the television. He got a cadence jump at the end of a quarter. They didn't go for it, but that was really sharp. They've been lining up. I think they only had one delay a game, which they blew a timeout. I don't know. We could argue about that later. They threw from the, the one-yard line twice when they were backed up against their own end zone. Mm -hmm. And then him sliding inbounds, okay, in that situation while sticking the ball out. Like, there are little things that he does really, really well. Am I maybe am I too hyped up about those little things, or are those the kind of things that you're looking for from any quarterback? No, I think uh, I don't think you're too overhyped. I mean, all you can do is go by what you've seen, you know, in the, the three games he's played. The one thing, in addition to what you just said, which was because I I, I kind of caught me off guard too when they're throwing, you know, from their goal line, right? And he's stepping back on play action in the end zone. That's pretty conf pretty good confidence, you know, from Kyle Shanahan to do that. A lot of people get the ball off your goal line without doing that. But I just think, in just studying every quarterback from around the league, I just think he's got tremendous pocket awareness. He doesn't, like, when he sees color or he feels color, he doesn't panic. He doesn't over, he doesn't escape the pocket just to get away from it. Like, he's able to live in there, you know? And that's what you got to be able to do. There's guys, I mean, I could call out cars and wins. I could call a lot of guys. That man, when they see, they just panic in the pocket. Yep. And this guy doesn't do it. I mean, some guys panic to the point, Joe, where they get they sack themselves in the pocket. He doesn't do that. Brian wow. Baldinger here on the morning Ross on 95 7 the game, breaking down Niners and Seahawks as the Niners clinched their second NFC West Division Championship in the last two years. And on the other side of the football, Baldy, I was fortunate enough to go to that game. And I swear to God, Bosa, it felt like he was in the backfield every single play. This guy. I, I, look, I thought during this three-game stretch, if you want to win DPOY, you got to play well against Miami, Tampa Bay, and Seattle. Some primetime games, and Bolsa did that much, much more. This guy, I, I, I don't, 
I don't I don't have any superlatives for this guy anymore. He's got to be the leader of the clubhouse for that award. And so a couple things. When I saw uh, the Tampa Bay we're gonna reconnect with Baldy. We're gonna reconnect with Baldy real quick. We're, we got a we, we got his line here. We're gonna reconnect. He sounds with like him. a transformer. Yeah, he's in the he's with the he, no one Baldy. He's probably in a spaceship somewhere. He's not in the city of angels in a hotel. He's in a spaceship with the hotel room. Like the redeem team, he's on a yacht off right. to the side. Right. Of, off to the side yeah. of the he, island. He's in a, he's in a spaceship with the hotel in it, overlooking the city of angels. I can't wait to hear his answer mm. about Bosa because I know you love Bosa. Come on, but I my guy. Shasky, seriously, every single play, I'm like. This guy is relentless. Doubles, triples, swim. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. This guy was pushing the pocket. All right, let's get Baldy back out. We got Baldy back out. Go ahead, Baldy. Let's hear that answer about Nick Bolson. Well, you know, I was talking to Nick on the field, you know, brief, not not for a long time, but but he said, Oh, so you think Max Crosby is the defensive player of the year? <laughs> like, you know, he hears all this stuff, right? <laughs> wow. And I said, Well, you know, he he plays every snap, Nick. Like he, he's on the field, doesn't comes off the field. He goes, Hey. I'm getting ready for the postseason. You know, I mean, he just had, you know, he had a firm answer. Like, I can't play every play. They need me for four games in a postseason or three games, whatever it is. So I, I thought that's a good comeback, you know. <laughs> maybe Max gets there, maybe he does. I don't know. But, you know, I know Nick's thinking about, you know, Super Bowl Sunday in, in Glendale, Arizona. So that kind of like, I thought that was a good answer. But then, you know, I, I did this, uh, this video, Nick, the other day, Bonte, and – you know, it bothered me that they took the sack away from him. You know, off the pick six, Lenore, you know, and, and Nick takes him down. And it, it just it bugged me because they flagged him for something they shouldn't flag him in. Uh, you know, he's doing everything he possibly can yep. to not affect the quarterback in a way where you're going to draw a penalty. I mean, he hit him with the scapula, like, <laughs> like the, the tiniest shoulder yeah. bone that there is. Like, he didn't hit it. And, you know, they threw the flag. And what I did was I just wanted – everybody to know how hard he plays. And so I put that play last because these sacks, he's got 15 and a half, he leads the league. These sacks are important. They're important for the awards. They're important for, you know, number one status about the best defense. There's a lot of reasons why you want to lead the league in sacks. And it's not being greedy. He plays the run as well as anybody. He gets off blocks. It's not just sacking a quarterback. It's what happens when you sack the quarterback. And all the things they got to do, the chips, the double teams, the slides, that allow guys, other guys to win, that allows – I showed a play where Tom Brady throws an interception to Dre Greenlaw. And the only reason why it's intercepted is because literally the running back on the play is chipping Nick Boza, and he's not out in the flat taking Dre, Dre Greenlaw with him. Mm. Like the effect that he has on mm -hmm. every other part of the defense is, is so – and that's when you, you talk about defense player, you all the kind of stuff. It, like sometimes it's just they just look at numbers. You got to look at how he affects right. the game mm -hmm. with how teams have to literally figure him out every play. Uh, Baldy, on that play, so it's 21 3. He gets the sack essentially or forces a, a really bad pass. The Almond Lenore steps in. Like that's game. Like that's the game right there. As a yeah. fan of the NFL, as someone who played in the NFL, as someone who talks about it, and obviously you consume it, you live, eat, breathe it, they've got to fix that. Like, that is a game-ending type of a play, and it feels like we're being penalized as fans, as players. It, it, I don't know. I don't... <laughs> It's not even a question. I'm just I'm frustrated because I watch the product every single week, and those types of plays drive me crazy. It's football, man. It's football. No, no, no. Le Le Joe, your, your point is so valid because, you know, what Nick would say is, look, I did everything right. You know, I mean, I, I beat my man. Yes. I beat the double team. I got to the quarterback, and I didn't drill him into the turf. I didn't hit his head. I didn't go low to his knee. I did everything that you're asking me to do. Okay? There's, there's, there's such a limit now, right? And he was completely within the limits. He didn't put his body weight mm -hmm. on top of him. He didn't do any of that. In fact, these guys are going out of their way now. Like I, so I watched like Aaron Donald roll the quarterback over the top of him. <laughs> like literally put him on a pillow. You know, but, but th they've adjusted. And that's what you, all you can do is all those hits that, you know, a guy like Ronnie Lott or yeah, Troy right. Palomalo would make in, in their careers. Like we know we can't do that anymore. Players know they can't. So they've all adjusted how they target a guy, yeah. how they hit him, all that stuff. So, I don't want Nick 
to, and I'm all for protecting the quarterback for and sure. protecting defenseless players completely. We all are. Yeah. When a guy does everything right, everything right, which is really limiting now, and you penalize him, I have a problem with that. So what do you do? Do you, do, is it a reviewable? Because I don't really have a lot of faith that they're going to review it properly. Like, how, how do they fix this? Because well, that's, that's a game-changing play. To your point, Joe. They tried to do that with pass interference, and they never got that right. No, <laughs> I mean I still don't even know what a right. catch is. But right. like, how can they? How can they adjudicate this, Baldy? Because it that was a seminal moment in the game, and it changed the game. Yep. Yep. No, I'm with you, Joe. I don't. I don't, I don't think they can go and review it. It's because it's sub, it's very subjective. Yeah. You're gonna slow down the hit. Like don't yeah. don't right. do that. Don't like we we're seeing so much, like the the. They've slowed down every replay yeah. to the point where, you know, fans are screenshotting stuff. Well, you can't screenshot <laughs> no. pass interference. I'm sorry, you can't do it. You know, you can't screenshot helmet-to-helmet stuff. No. This stuff is up in real time. It's super fast. It's bang-bang. It's all these descriptions. Um, I don't want to see that happen. But I just got to, like, just give these guys a little bit of a break. Mm. Yeah. You know, if, if the quarter, look, if the quarterback is, like, what happened to Tua wasn't flagged. When he got his concussion. Like, that's ridiculous. Yes. Like, that play was a violent play. The guy picked him up and slammed him in the turf on Cincinnati. Like, flag that. But, like, just understand. And even, like, one thing, that Joe, that you should know is all these referees, all these officials, they study the games, the game tapes, yeah. to go and review all their plays and calls, what they missed, what they got right, all that stuff. Like, just know that when you're doing a 49er game, that Nick Boza – is he's literally doing everything right in his power. He's adjusted the way he plays the game. So when you when you when you watch it and officiate the game, know that Bosa is he's doing it the right way. Like give him a little bit of slack when a quarterback does hit the ground. Agreed. Brian Baldinger here on the Morning Russell on 95-7 the game. Couldn't agree more, Baldy, on that play. But looking ahead to the commander Saturday. They lose a tough one to the New York Giants. You want to talk about referees. They blitz the call in the end zone. Uh, call Terry McClure for lining it up wrong. No pass interference at the end of the game. But I'm, I'm looking at their offense, Paul, because we know their defense is going to be solid under Ron Rivera. Their offense and Tyler Henneke, I, I, he's just too loose with the ball. I, I don't. I didn't like what I saw last Saturday, last Sunday against the New York Giants with this Washington offense, Baldy. Well, you know, he has to throw the ball with such anticipation. Because he doesn't have a strong arm. So that's the that's the counter. All right, well, you, you love the fact that he gets the ball out of his hands and he's throwing it to a spot. Mm -hmm. And he's trusting Terry McLaurin's going to be there. Or, you know, pick, pick a player, right? Curtis Samuel. Uh, Dotson is going to yeah, be there Dotson, in the spot. Yeah. So guys that have to throw it with anticipation, mm. it looks loose. It looks like, you know, they're careless. But if he doesn't throw it at that time, he can't drive it the way a Josh Allen, a Mahomes can. Even Brock Purdy's got a better arm, um, so that's that's the counter. Is you you love the fact that he you know he you know people say well he's you know that's what all quarterbacks should do. Well, not all quarterbacks have to do it. You know some quarterbacks. I play with Randall Cunningham. Right. Randall never threw a ball with anticipation, <laughs> but he had a rocket. <laughs> yeah, like right. he waited till the guy was looking yeah. at him and then he <laughs> threw it to him. You know, and it got there lickety split. You know, John Madden used to say, "I hate these option these uh, these th these uh, option routes." Because, like, what if the guy isn't there? What yeah. if he does slip yeah. and the ball gets intercepted? I mean, that's coming from John Madden. But, yes, I mean, that's how Tyler, Taylor Heineke has to play the game, Bonte. Well, I, I'm looking at this matchup. I'm going to go out there on Saturday. Uh, what, what do they have going up against them defensively? Because I feel like this front for Washington, if, obviously, uh, Chase Thanks, can get back in there, it, it feels formidable with or without them. They feel even better with them. What are they going up against this weekend? That's really good. It's I think it's the best defensive front they've seen. I don't know. Um, you, you know, maybe the Rams with Aaron Donald, you know, earlier in the season. Yeah. I, it's as good as anybody they played this year. Okay. Because, uh, you know, Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen, like whether it's run or pass, they play with such great technique. Tez Sweat, you know, if he was as fast off the ball as Nick Bosa, he'd have Dick Bosa type of numbers. He just doesn't have a great takeoff. Like he's, but he's six foot six. He's two hundred and seventy pounds, and he runs like the wind. This guy is super talented. Um, they're really good up front. <clears throat> you know, those guys. They didn't have sacks the other day, but you know, you watch Daniel Jones throw the ball. I mean, the ball's out of his hands in two seconds. I mean, he's not holding it. They're not taking any deep shots in the game. 
And so everything is just, you know, the ball was out of his hands before, you know, anybody could get there. They got there. It just got there too late because the ball was out so quickly. They scored one offensive touchdown the whole day. Right. You know, they had, it took them 18 plays to score the touchdown. Um, they're, they're sound. They're very sound. These two safeties, Derek Forrest and Cam Curl, they're really good players. You, mm. you, you put the ball up there in the middle of the field, they're going to hit you, and they both have good range, and they got good ball skills. The two of them do. Yeah, it feels like it's going to be a physical game at Levi Stadium. I'm here We've for kind it. of circled this on the calendar for a few weeks now as Washington's desperate for a playoff spot. Baldy, how will you be spending your holiday weekend? Well, it's all work, I'll be honest <laughs> with you. I'm doing Saturday's game in Kansas City. Ooh, Seahawks. Too. All right, so that's the early game on mm. Christmas Eve, all right? And then there is no – there are not a lot of flight options out of Kansas City. But I can get to see my girlfriend in Miami – on Saturday night, and then I got a flight on Christmas night back to L.A. because they need me in L.A. Like, you know, we're a little shorthanded. It's Christmas. They need Baldy out there in L.A. to kind of, you know, man the shows. So, uh, you know, it's, I'm going to be on an airplane. I'm going to have a little bit of time. You know, you know my girlfriend's not going to be thrilled because – all I'm going to do is watch football. And <laughs> so, you know, I'll be on the couch watching football. All right, Baldy, now i got to ask you. Of all the people that you've been around in celebrity, in right. media, in your playing career, who is the best and who is the worst gift giver? Um, Eric Dickerson was really good. Eric Dickerson <laughs> really? won the rushing title in 1988 when I was in Indianapolis. And I still have a pair of cowboy boots that he, that he made. Now, I'm not a big cowboy boot wearer anymore. My feet grew since I got done playing, <laughs> so they don't fit that great anymore. But, uh, but they, they were the, the nicest pair of boots I've ever seen anybody have. The, he, he, he was really good. Um, <clears throat> gift giver. Uh, the worst, I don't want to, I, I can't really say the worst. Um, you know, Randall Cunningham is cheap. <laughs> you know, like, he, he, you know, we got to the playoffs with Randall. He was cheap. Uh, you know, like, R RC, he, 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 I, you know, the money wasn't coming out of that wallet. But, uh, he had alligator arms, huh? <laughs> he, he couldn't get the coins out of his pocket. <laughs> is, is that not the worst, though? Like, honestly, when you go out to eat and you know that someone's not going to ever reach for their right. wallet or whatever. He's like, not swiping that credit card. It, it's, it's so annoying to me. <laughs> That is, and it you know it, it, it once you get to, it's not even a reputation because it's not like they do it one time. No, they do it all the time. Exactly, right. you know, like it's who they are. Right. You know, I have friends like growing up like on the East Coast, like you'd get ready to go through a toll booth, right? Yeah, it's a buck fifty to toll. They pretend like they went to sleep, like they're sleeping. <laughs> they didn't know where the toll booth. I used to be that like guy. They went Baldy. to sleep on you over a buck fifty. <laughs> I used to be that guy. <laughs> Knowing the tolls coming up thirty minutes, let me just shut up and close my eyes for a second. Hey. We can tell you you got a couple bucks. Oh, what did you talk about? <laughs> we had a buddy in high school. You know, you know, like you know, back in the day, right? Yeah. You know, I had like this. Uh, I, I had an, a, an old Camaro. My, yeah. my first car was a Camaro. You know, like none of us had any money. Yeah. So you know, you want to go to the beach, right? Okay. You need you know two you need two gallons of gas. All right. So you're like poning up like two bucks a piece. Four of us are in the Camaro. Like you know, where's the two bucks? You know, we're gonna put eight dollars in the in the car. Uh, well, you know, I, I'm a little short handed. <laughs> I'm a little short handed right now. I left my wallet, at, you know, at home. Yeah. Ball, you know what they call that in uh, menace right. to society? What's, you got snaps on the petrol. You got snaps on the petrol. Yeah, come on, <laughs> snaps on the petrol. Come on. Oh man, hey Baldy, man, happy yeah. holidays yeah, to Merry you Christmas, buddy. and your family. Happy holidays, Merry guys. Christmas. Yep. We'll talk to you and, after the new year. Yeah. We're not. We're going to be off next week. So I mean this on on yep. not just me and B, but behalf of everybody that listens to you. Thank you for making yep. us smile and obviously educating. Every Week. us yep. but you really make us smile you're, you're just your your charisma seeps through the airwaves and we just we just yep. thank you i appreciate that joe happy holidays to everybody at the station to yourself and uh i, I really uh i really enjoy coming on every week so we yep. we'll talk uh, after the holidays yeah after the goes. holidays and hopefully you get a sign out here to levi stadium Hell for one yeah. of these home games for the 49ers and we'll see you in studio baldy you're the best man merry see christmas you, happy holidays all right, all right.